and welcome to today's episode of Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. My name is Kahala, and I'm your host. Well, you know, we always have the most amazing guests here at Pros and Politics Podcast. And now that it's the new year, happy new year to all my political pros and gents, by the way. And we are back off a of sabbatical. Your girl needed a break. Okay. Three school age children. It was Christmas time. Everybody needed a little time off, but we're back like we never left. And what an amazing guest to bring us back off of sabbatical. None other than di the director of the Illinois State Police, Brendan F. Kelly. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, director. How are you? It's cold out there. I'm, I'm dressed appropriately. I hope you are, too. I, I mean, the sweater goes down to my knees. Yes, okay, good. it is very cold in the St. Louis metro area right about now. So, yes, but we are so happy to have you. Happy New Year. To Thank you. Happy family. New Year as well. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, it's we've known each other a long time. Yes, we have many years, many years. And it's been a great working relationship. And I've had the most amazing experience Good. with you and your um, department for the last two years in my current capacity. But you just celebrated five years, sir. Yes, this month will be uh, five years since I've been director of the Illinois State Police. It seems like I've uh, just started the job, but it also seems like I've been doing it for a thousand years. Yes. So uh, it's the best best job in the world and any chance I can get to talk about it, I'm, I'm always excited to do so. So glad to be here today to be able to do that. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I know you're busy. Hey, you know, everybody's busy. Yeah. Everybody's As we both busy. Are, I know you're busy. So for you to take the time to come on Pros and Politics Podcast and share about your position as director and the Illinois State Police is just tremendous because y'all doing a lot. There is a lot going on. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And, and I think uh, a lot of uh, the public, particularly um, in Illinois, uh, can see the great impact that the Illinois State Police mm -hmm. are having. But I do think, uh, you know, anytime there's an opportunity to talk about what the ISP is doing, I, I really look forward to doing that because there are so many things that we're doing. And it's also, uh, I think sometimes um, people think of the Illinois State Police just uh, the primary encounters that they may have on the interstate. The highway. I was going to say it's all about the highway yeah. encounter for me. They, so. they see those sharp looking professional troopers with that strong <laughs> command experience and, and command presence uh, with those uh, the Montana peak hat that they wear and the sharp looking uniform. Uh, and that's definitely a, a historic part of the ISP and an important part of the Illinois State Police. But uh, the things that the public and the things that uh, the General Assembly, the right, the laws in the state, um, uh, the governor, uh, the people that uh, uh, set policy and direction for uh, law enforcement in the state. There's a great deal uh, of uh, additional things that they've asked us to do over the past hundred years since the Illinois State Police has, has been an agency. Over we just, the last five years. I celebrated my five years, but uh, we just celebrated the hundred years of the agency. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it was a really big deal. It, it was. It was. You it was put great. a lot into that. Mm -hmm. We did. Uh, Jackie Jonah Kersey was involved and did a, a, a great uh, thing for us. We had a, a big centennial gala. We had a, a lot of events that uh, around the state that marked uh, the centennial. We had sp sp special vehicles. We actually had some of the current squad cars uh, repainted to look like uh, the colors and the insignia that they had on the vehicles yeah, years ago through different parts of the Illinois State Police history. So, yeah, it, it was a big deal. It was. And the fact is, you know, uh, a lot has happened in those hundred years. Mm -hmm. And and the agency started when there were more horses uh, than there were cars. Mm -hmm. And and there were uh, this new invention uh, that was tearing up roads and causing accidents and getting people killed uh, called automobiles. Mm -hmm. And the state legislature decided we need somebody out there to kind of rein things in and, and, and enforce the, the rules of the road. And that's why the Illinois State Police was established. It was a an agency of, of nine guys on uh, motorcycles, World War I uh, surplus motorcycles. That's how it started. And now it's an agency of almost 3,000 employees. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we have a budget of nearly 800 million. Um, it, we have uh, responsibilities from the Wisconsin border all the way to Kentucky border and everywhere in between. We're operating in urban environments. We're operating in suburban environments, mm -hmm. a lot of rural, rural areas yes. that we're responsible for. And, and yes, our, our, our kind of well-known over, over those years has been uh, our troopers that are out on the interstate and telling people to slow down and, and uh, making sure they're bu buckled up and, and not driving under the influence. But really, uh, uh, you know, that is a, a, a window uh, that is into a much bigger world in terms of what the Illinois State Police does. Um, we have a division of patrol, and I'd, I'd love to talk about that some more because they're doing some great things. But we also have a division of criminal investigation. Absolutely. And they, they investigate uh, homicides, they investigate um, uh, exploitation of children, uh, child pornography, uh, drug trafficking, trafficking, gun trafficking, every type of trafficking. Yes. And, and that is a a recent significant shift in our mentality that we've had to make in terms of the evolution of our agency. And it's not just within the Division of Criminal Investigation, but it's also within the Division of Patrol and, and the other divisions that we have. Those other divisions are our forensic services. Uh, we one of the largest laboratory systems. You cleaned that up, didn't you? We, we made a lot of progress. You did. Um, it's, it's, you're never satisfied completely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you wish uh, that all those uh, forensic services were, were done instantly, like it plays out on television. Right. Uh, you know, on on uh, the forty five minutes uh, of the fifty eight minute program. Yeah, Law and Order. You know, they get the DNA sample and and there's a conviction forty five minutes later. It doesn't really work that way in reality. Not at all. Um, but there has been a, a long, uh, big historic backlog of forensics, particularly on the DNA front, particularly on sex assault kits. And uh, two years ago, uh, we were able to, for the first time ever, get under the statutory deadline for all sex assault kits. We, have, we, have, we have zero uh, sexual assault uh, uh, DNA um, samples awaiting testing uh, that are past the deadline. Uh, and so it is, is a huge difference that we've made. Now, there's still going to be ups and downs in terms of uh, uh, other disciplines. You know, we, we do all the toxicology testing. We do all the drug chemistry testing. Uh, ballistics, uh, latent prints, I think those things like fingerprints and, and other uh, forensics, all the cool stuff you see on television. We do that for the entire state, not just the only state police cases. We do it for Chicago, like for CPD. We do it for uh, Cairo and everywhere in between. And, and it, it is one of the largest laboratory systems in the world. And we're also uh, responsible for training, training of our troopers in the division of the academy. And, and we also train local law enforcement through our recruit academy. So and it's a lot. It is. And I appreciate you saying you know that you're never satisfied right because that's yeah. that's the director kelly that's the brendan that i know right but we like to um give people their flowers and their credit here on well, the I platform appreciate that. <laughs> flowers are nice that <laughs> is important because women whether it's what did you say the rape kits yeah and there were there was the backlog and that's important the fact that you said that is important because there are victims that need to be heard, need to be seen, and oftentimes may or may not have felt that way because, right. well, wh there's this backlog. But you said we're going to grab a hold of this and we're going to come up with a plan because you are definitely a planner. Yeah. And you're going to put that plan in motion to get that done. And the fact that it was done, people had... You know, we have many dreams and aspirations, sure. but for them to come to fr fruition is what's most important. So I didn't want you to gloss over that. I know oh, you're I being, appreciate that. And, but we want to make sure that people know the gains that have been made, right? And the um, victories that have been fought and won. It is a victory. And it, it is a victory for the the bench scientists working in our laboratories every day that, that are just uh, cranking out the work. Mm -hmm. they're, they're doing the work. Um, it, it's a victory for focusing on uh, metrics, focusing on accountability, making decisions accountability. based upon objective data, uh, and and just again, ha yeah, you're right. Have a plan, follow through. I think that's some of the biggest challenges that we see, not just in the public safety world, um, but in the wider world that you talk about here, in terms of uh, how people expect government to perform, where where there's a, a lack of uh, faith and when there's a lack mm -hmm. of trust, it comes from just not executing. There's a lot of good intentions mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of good um, sentiments that people have and, and lofty goals. 
but you you have to follow through. You Absolutely. got to execute, and that's where I think um, we've been able to do it on that front. Mm -hmm. I think you know we've seen good progress by making some difficult decisions and focusing on some needed changes within how we do our patrol effort statewide, uh, and and those are leading to some good outcomes. Uh, after the uh, and during the pandemic, um, you know, we definitely saw a huge surge in shootings on the expressways and in the interstates okay. throughout the state of Illinois. Wow. And so we had to look at our, look at ourselves. And say, hey, this is our area of responsibility. Uh, you know, we want to make sure people can come and go to their lives, you know, uh, to, to the, the things they do in their lives, to school, to work, uh, home to your family, to their families, to, to you know, the things that are um uh, all part of the great American experience and living a good life in the state of Illinois. Uh, we want to make sure people, when they're on our in the interstate, they can come and go safely. That's that's the lifeline. Uh, uh, that's the blood uh, uh, line of, of our community and our economy is being able to uh, move around safely. And when that threat emerged, we really had to take a tough look at ourselves and ask, you know, is what we're doing and what we've done for, you know, a while, a good 20 years, the same kind of pattern. It changes every 20 years. There's always evolution in law enforcement, but you know, was what we were doing really having the impact and were we using our people and our resources in a way that made sense. And again, make decisions based upon math, right. upon data, upon evidence and not upon uh, habit and sort of past practice or tradition you know, um, there may have been times where it, it might have been nice to have a, have a trooper on a country road back somewhere um, uh, where they could maybe stop a few speeders and uh, and and talk to, uh, talk to uh, a few people and tell them to slow down. And, and maybe they'll uh, stop at the diner and get a little coffee on the way, too, and see how folks are doing there. Um, but that is not something that perhaps we can afford to do, uh, again, not just in terms of cost, but in terms of putting people on where they need to be to prevent what the public expects us to prevent. Right which is, place, right time. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, prevent the violence, prevent fatalities, mm -hmm. be able there to interdict uh, the drugs, the guns, and the human trafficking that are moving all across the interstates in the state of Illinois. And and that required us to make some tough decisions. And and I've got some great young leaders um, around me that have been able to uh, to 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 promote and move up within uh, the command structure that are willing to challenge the status quo uh, and willing to say, hey, I love the Illinois State Police, uh, but one of the best things about us is, is, is our value of pride. And that's not an arrogance, but it is a, are we the best we can be? Absolutely. Um, you know, um, are we doing everything we can to accomplish the mission that the public expects us to do? And when they asked those questions and they came forward with uh, solutions and requests and suggestions, I said, go do it. And so they've made some some good changes that are are seeing uh, just in the past uh, uh, two years and, and in this most recent year a thirty over thirty percent reduction in expressway shootings and, and interstate shootings in the state of Illinois just in twenty twenty three. That's terrific. It was an even bigger drop um, in uh, from twenty one to twenty two, um, but the the uh, uh, in the Chicago land area we saw we saw a bigger drop. But overall statewide we've seen significant progress this year in terms of that, and that that's a result of a more focused enforcement approach, again, putting people where uh, the potential violence is going to be, mm -hmm. um, looking at looking at the data, uh, putting people where we know there might be drugs being trafficked, where guns okay. are being trafficked. Uh, human trafficking is another thing that we're training our people to focus on as well. And making sure that our people are out there doing uh, appropriate enforcement to prevent uh, fatalities. Now, uh, enforcement doesn't always mean you write everybody a ticket or you uh, do arrests, but it can mean just that presence that's out there causes people to slow down, think twice, uh, make different decisions just by the fact that there's a, a trooper in the right place at the right time that potentially deters uh, some bad decision making or some criminal activity. And that seems to, again, to be having an effect. And I'm very proud of the work that our, our people are doing there. But at the root of it is, is again, our, uh, our core values uh, and, and building upon those core values uh, with objective decision making, good strategy, good planning. Sometimes it's, you know, it, it's not sexy. It's not exciting. You know, uh, having to put, sit through a, a meeting and discuss, hey, how are you progressing on this? How are you progressing on that? Is this policy that we have makes sense? Accountability be, again yeah, yeah. in in every everything. Yeah. And it's two things that you said that are very important to me as a civilian because what did you say? You all protect and serve, of course, each other, but sure. us. 
Absolutely. And I know in my current capacity, I have to sometimes I'm happy about it. Sometimes not travel to Chicago a lot. Sure. I'm not happy yeah. when I got to leave my family. Right. Yeah. But happy because we serve. Right. And for you to say one, it's 30 percent safer for me to travel from St. Clair County to cook. Right. Um, or just generally across the state. Right. And as a former prosecutor, as a former defense attorney and in my current capacity, People, not everyone understands, but it's not lost on me what a significant number 30% is, okay? And then the human trafficking dynamic that you are evolving within right. your department. Because I had an incident in 2023, myself, Kanisha, that you know, and Brandy, yeah. in Chicago. And I had to have direct contact with one of your um, members from your department about that. And they were so professional Good. and they really cared about the fact that someone had this particular incident and wanted to continue to work through that process through the department. Good. So this didn't happen to another woman or another set of women. So again, what you're doing, it really is making an impact on the day-to-day -day lives of the people here in the state of Illinois. Well, I, I, I appreciate hearing that. And, and it is, uh, Sometimes when you're in the daily grind, um, you are so focused on uh, what the, uh, uh, the the daily issue is or the, the, the fire that you're putting out that day, uh, as well as, you know, sort of a broad, uh, bigger picture that can be uh, sometimes feel a little bit impersonal. You have to make decisions objectively and you do have to um, set your feelings aside. You do have to, again, you know, be objective about how you're making making decisions and how you're assigning uh, people to do certain jobs. But it, it, it does, and at the end of the day, come down to real human beings that are being impacted. Um, that is 30 percent less people that have been shot at mm -hmm. on the interstates. Um, those are real people that didn't have to endure that trauma or potentially have their, their lives uh, terribly impacted. Um, just like with the sexual assault uh, uh, DNA uh, cases, those are real human beings that have been impacted by that. And that's again, it's not just necessarily in that case about um, uh, some comfort and, and healing, uh, for the, um, alleged, alleged victim. Sometimes, uh, it's about uh, exonerating someone who may have not been the, the, the right, uh, uh, individual that was the subject of the investigation. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, real people whose lives are being impacted by, by justice and seeing fairness and, and, and justice, uh, come from those things and, 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 and public and public safety. And, uh, again, I, I appreciate you saying that because uh, sometimes you can get very disconnected from um, how real people uh, are impacted. But, you know, I think at, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very lucky to be uh, able to work with these amazing um, men and women who are just uh, outstanding professionals. And, you know, I get to uh, it, you know, the policy stuff is a little boring. The administrative stuff is a little boring. It's very important. Yes. Legal stuff is boring, but I love being out there with them mm -hmm. and going on details uh, with them. I learn so much uh, when I see them doing the hands on work. I do all this. So I do all the same training uh, as our as our troopers, the quarterly cycle in terms of uh, control and arrest tactics in terms of uh, firearms in terms of uh, first aid in terms of you know hazardous material handling we, we have a very robust training regimen okay so I I do I, I require myself to do everything that they do um, and you it, don't ask what you can't give yeah exactly mm -hmm. and, and it's 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 also um, not being able to uh, really what I like what I like doing is to be able to understand uh, where the potential strengths and weaknesses are. Okay. Um, there's obviously, you know, uh, analysis and reports and, and what's being uh, put up to you through the chain of command. But I like to be in, with the trooper that's on the street. Um, with the crime scene investigator that's out there. On the you know, ground, absolutely. Literally on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, going through uh, uh, the pockets of, of a deceased victim, you know, trying to identify who this person is and, and figure out who they are. Um, I'd like to be, um, you know, with uh, the, the drug enforcement officer that's, that's out there trying to figure out where uh, these, uh, the flow of fentanyl is coming from and, and mm -hmm. being able to talk to someone who may be an addict, but might have more information about, uh, the dealer that's selling it to them that, that is being, uh, funded and, and motivated by the cartels that are trying to poison and, and hurt people in the state of Illinois. 
I like being out there with them. Uh, I go up with our air ops people. Uh, we have uh, great air operations. And uh, it's amazing to see them in action as well and be able to uh, safely uh, uh, facilitate a pursuit from the air uh, when someone steals a car, when someone, you know, uh, is, is hijacked, you know, vehicularly hijacked, you know, uh, or there's someone who is uh, fleeing and, and they committed an armed robbery. And, but we don't want to have our officers uh, pursuing them in a, on the ground in a dangerous Busy way. Busy streets yeah, and that, that, running red light. Yeah, yes, they hurt, hurt innocent people. That it, it, it's you know it, it accidentally happens. You know, right. but you have to be able to follow through on on uh, people that have broken the law. There has to be accountability. And the great Absolutely. thing about air ops is that, is that we can keep an eye on them from the sky, and to be able to safely zero in on that individual that needs to be arrested. Mm -hmm in a much more uh, uh, managed way. Uh, seeing our canines in action, being able to uh, see how they can uh, safely uh, uh, bring people to um, into custody without having to use a firearm, without having to use you know more, more dangerous tactics. I, I did the, a uh, uh, couple uh, months ago, put a bite suit on uh, myself and had the, do the dog uh, take a nice uh, uh, chunk out of me and saw the the canines in action, you know, I, I, but it was, it, it was, it was, it was a learning experience for me to understand the power of that tool, but understand how we use it in a very disciplined, uh, very restrained and very thoughtful way. Um, and it's just a reality that there's dangers in the world. Mm -hmm. There's crime in the world and, and law enforcement exists to make sure there's accountability for that. But we have to be uh, very smart about how we do it to ensure that the public trusts us. Absolutely. Uh, I told you, I just adore Rosie. Oh, the, <laughs> Trooper, the, is she the, the canine? I, yes, uh, yes yeah. Rosie, so I just love her. And she's so, I mean, they are just so like, professional. they are so professional. They are canines and they are troopers, but they are so professional. And the public loves her. So yeah. it's not like, okay, everybody just comes up, but people really feel safer yeah. when she and Trooper Rivera are around or whatever the situation may be. And so I've dealt with a lot of your canines. And again, people, most people are like, oh, well, they're... no, most people really like the fact that you all are around. Like, I know I feel better yeah. when you all are around. So it, no, and that's what we want people to understand, like the respect for law enforcement when it's done the right way, when Absolutely. you have a director and, you know, a community of people within a department that really want to protect and serve and they're trained and they're trying to remain trained and they're trying to make sure that they, you know, that there's community interaction for people to be able to understand that we really are here to help. I mean, it goes really back to the, the pretty basic principles of, of what the police are supposed to be. There's something called the, the Peelian principles. Uh, uh, Sir Robert Peel, he was a uh, prime minister in the United Kingdom that they used to not beat police 200 years ago, which is kind of you hired a bunch of armed guys that you know, beat people up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you say, or, or guards that, you know, this is, this is uh, what you're going to do. And, and there was a great deal. Of, the kneecaps? No, we yeah, don't, no. no, we don't need that. And, and there was a great deal of, of reform. And uh, I'm sure you've heard of a, what a, a Bobby, you know, that British police officers called mm -hmm. a Bobby. Well, they're called a Bobby because, uh, that was started by Sir Robert Peel, Bobby Peel. And he laid out uh, some very basic principles about what the police are supposed to be that have stood the test of time. And, you know, it, the most profound one is that the people are the police and the police are the people. They, they have to reflect one another. Absolutely. Uh, and there has to be trust with one another. Uh, and, and you cannot have effective policing if there's not trust with the public. And the public, you know, needs to know that their police are effective and, and that they're working and they're protecting public public safety. Otherwise, that cycle breaks down and no one is safe. No uh, one. It, it, it's, 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 uh, it breaks down this sort of fundamental contract that we have between um, the people that are consenting to the laws uh, and the people that are enforcing the laws. Um, and those are principles that are talked about at the Illinois State Police Academy. One of the things I really enjoy is uh, instructing at the a police academy 
I uh, do the criminal law with our good friend Jim Piper, who's our, our major case counsel. And uh, we love Jim Piper. Yes. Uh, some, Kristen, I love Jim Piper. Yeah, he's the man. And he, he, he's uh, my Jiminy Cricket, my conscience, to be sure. He's, he's, uh, he's uh, been a great asset uh, to mm -hmm. me and to the Illinois State Police. And then when I get a chance to instruct at the academy, I get to see uh, every single new cadet. So every single new cadet since I've been director, I've had a chance to instruct and interact with, you know, personally and try to reinforce what's great about the Illinois State Police at that at that early level. But our academy is very vigorous and it, it doesn't necessarily uh, depend on just, you know, one set of instruction from the director. It is reinforced over and over at many stages uh, through the academy, the importance of integrity. Uh, we have a very vigorous background check process. That That is a challenge for us in terms of hiring. Um, we have a lot of people want to be the Illinois State Police, but it, it whittles down after we, you know, find things in people's backgrounds and or or there's uh, ethical questions. You know, we're not looking for perfect saints. There are no saints. You know, correct. Uh, um, uh, we're all we're all saints. We're all sinners in some way, uh, but we're looking for real people that that will relate. To uh, to the public, um, but there are certain things and hold up the standard. Yes, Let's but be you got to have a standard. Yes, yes and so when you standard. talk about pride, um, I would hope and would think that no one would glean from this episode any type of um, unfavorable pride. Everyone should have pride in what they do. Absolutely, and yeah. you know it's what well, we always you know often talk about what we read in the Bible, you and I, and it's it's the you know the arrogant pride or the foolish right. pride. That's the issue, not the pride right. that you have pride in your department. I have pride in my work. You know, you right. want to raise children and families that, you know, will know you need to be proud of who you are and what you do. And this is the expectation that I have right. so I can remain to be proud. So, no, the, it is clear when dealing with the men and women of ISP that there's a standard, that there's a, there's a, the checks and balances that go on right. in determining who can wear that uniform and who can wear that hat, who's going to get in that cruiser. Um, it, it is just clear. And sometimes, you know, it's easier to articulate than others, but again, it is clearly a standard. And, and it's a, it's a standard that's been high uh, for a long time. Um, and I think a lot of it's rooted in the, the paramilitary training at the Academy, but we also are the only law enforcement agency in the state by law that is authorized to investigate itself in cases of officer involved uh, shootings, officer involved uses of force, et cetera. You know, we, we take out our own trash. Uh, if somebody ain't cutting the mustard, uh, if they violate their oath, we'll arrest them ourselves. Uh, we don't wait for the FBI to come in. We don't wait for some outside agency to come in. And that's something that the legislature going back to the 70s has trusted the Illinois State Police to, to do. do. And because we police ourselves, um, uh, you know, um, a lot of the the various changes and controversies that have occurred over the years as it relates to law enforcement, uh, we've been able to weather those because our values have stayed the same. We've always been tough on ourselves. Uh, we don't allow um, things that are not consistent with our culture uh, to fester. Um, and again, you know, uh, we're an institution of human beings uh, and there are people going to make mistakes and sometimes they're very bad mistakes, uh, but we hold people accountable to that. Uh, but we also have a culture where um, we're not afraid for our, 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 our very aggressive uh, go-getter officers are out there that are going after the bad guys, that it's okay uh, to critique them afterwards, to, be, to do a, a debriefing, to say, hey, you know, this worked out okay, but that could have gone real bad right there. Or okay. you should have done this, this better and not uh, come across as if we're, we're just kind of giving you a hard time or, mm -hmm. or beating you down or uh, being hypercritical. Not but, letting you do your job. Like. Yeah, yeah. It's not micromanaging. It is, uh, we're not trying to mess with your career. We're actually trying to save your career. We're trying to build up your career. We're trying to make you, make you stronger. And once you make it clear to uh, the officers that, yeah, go hard. Uh, we want to make sure uh, 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 people that have violated the law are brought to justice, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but we're going to do it safely. We're going to do it with, within our rules. Uh, we're going to hold to our standards, and we're going to try to keep improving every single time. Do that incident debrief and, and say, you know, this is what we could do uh, better next time. It's, you know, like that uh, that show that I think everybody watched during the pandemic, uh, uh, Cheer, you know, that, on, on Netflix. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that you know do it uh, do it over and over again until you get it right and then do it over and over and over again until you can't even get it wrong like you just keep practicing you keep training mm -hmm. And that's a big part of ISP's culture, a big part of ISP standards. And, and it's, you know, again, not just in the daily tactics, mm -hmm. um, but it's also in how um, we organize ourselves. It's, it's uh, measuring how uh, efficient and effective we are. But I think it's also uh, an openness to uh, the evolution of law enforcement as it reflects the people. I just recently went through uh, a 40 hour course with, with our cadets. I did it with, with our cadets uh, on crisis intervention training. So okay. being much more uh, sophisticated and, and, and better trained and in tune with what we've learned about mental health, mm -hmm. how people make critical yeah, these days. Yes. And, and it's such a broad spectrum of mental mm -hmm. health issues from uh, depression, anxiety, um, schizophrenia, uh, you name it. Yes. Uh, Mixed with uh, substance abuse disorders, self-medicating. Um, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And, and pick a pick a controlled substance, pick a drug, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol, whatever the case may be. Uh, people are abusing that in in uh, in in concert with their mental health issues. You know, at the same time they're dealing with these mental health issues, and uh, it's it's not that. Um, uh, there's some new magical formula there within cr with the crisis intervention training and how we respond to people with mental health issues. But it's just that we have a better understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, good cops for decades have known how to talk to people, how to uh, uh, talk them down, how to manage them in a safe way. But there's been a lot of mistakes in interacting with uh, people with mental health issues because there just wasn't an understanding. It wasn't, very, it wasn't very good science. I was about to say that I think a lot of times it was an issue of it being taboo. Yes. Yeah. Um, and mental health was not something you talked about. Right. It was something you didn't discuss outside the house. Well, you know, I don't want my child to go see a psychologist or psychiatrist right. or be on the necessary medication. Um, and so I think from everybody, from Simone Biles to whomever, has really put us in a position to be able to firmly, finally acknowledge it and take Absolutely. away the stigma. Absolutely. And we talk about that a lot here because mental health is very important. Um, and we try to promote therapy and treatment and meds and all those things. Well, you know, mental health uh, in the law enforcement context and even generally shouldn't be treated any differently than health, mm -hmm. uh, physical health. Absolutely. You know, we, we have uh, very well-trained um, uh, officers uh, that go through emergency medical response uh, training. So okay. uh, this is not just standard first aid, but um, if you're out there on the interstate, it could be an hour before, you know, a medevac gets there. And so, our people have traditionally had um, just below the EMT level, okay. uh, so they are uh, they are not uh, all EMTs. Some of them are, but they have that middle training, which is a little higher standard than than most law enforcement in the state to be able to respond to medical issues. And they have to requalify every year. And I do, okay. I do the training as well. I find it I find it uh, uh, very helpful to learn the latest techniques in terms of. Uh, responding to someone with, you know, diabetes or a heart attack or some kind of cardiac incident or they're bleeding and you have to stop the bleed. But we need to train our, our people and we are training our people now um, with uh, the same set of skills and the same robustness to be able to deal with mental health issues mm -hmm. and be able to identify those issues and how to speak to somebody that's in crisis and be able to safely resolve a, a potentially dangerous situation. Right. And I think that's a positive thing. I think the other great thing about uh, requiring our people to have this training is that it's an environment in which, uh, while we're talking about members of the public that, that law enforcement are encountering with mental health issues, it's a way to have a conversation about that officer's mental health, mm -hmm. to, to talk about the mental health issues that they may be struggling with. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a job where our people are exposed to the most uh, dark and difficult and, and um, you know, soul crushing yeah. sometimes uh, events, um, violence, um, you know, death, despair, uh, death. I uh, mean, even a traffic accident. Ab I absolutely. Mean, you know, I come from a public service background. So whether it was my father's sure. chief and my brother, yeah. he's 20 years in, you know, about to retire and just some of the burned bodies and yeah. when those five children had that you know that house fight, like that really yeah did something to him and so just to know that you don't just care about our mental health 
right? And when we're in crises or whatever, but the fact that ISP cares about the mental and physical health of the individuals that are absorbing that every day. Like that's a lot. I, I know I couldn't do it. Like I'm 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 not a trooper for a reason. Okay. I'm I'm not a, a breast cancer surgeon for a reason. Like there are just things that I know I can't sure. do. So I picked the thing that I could, you know, Absolutely. but to know that people every day are dealing with that trauma and you all are like, we acknowledge that and we want to help. You, you, you have to. And and again, we we're not always perfect about how we handle uh, the wellness and mental health of, of our personnel. We, we miss things, you know, we're, we're a large institution and we have a lot of work to do on a daily basis and it's got to get done. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we miss uh, some of those signs that people mm -hmm. are struggling, but by being able to talk about it, uh, that gives us at least a better chance that we're going to be able to do something about it. You know, it, we have to, again, we have to think of mental health no different than physical health. If one of our people is in a pursuit and they, you know, step in a hole and they bust their knee, you know, uh, we're going to give them time to get surgery and get repaired. Right. They're going to be, you know, we're going to get them uh, uh, the support they need to get back on the job. Um, we have uh, people that, you know, they're late in their career and, and you know, maybe they've had too many uh uh, donuts over the years and they got to go get a stint put in and they're and because they're having cardiac issues they're going to get the time off they're going to go get that procedure we're going to support their you know uh, rehabilitation but uh, if uh, people are being exposed to things that are leaving mental scars mm -hmm. um, we have to be able to recognize and respond accordingly Absolutely. in that way as well and provide them uh, the support that they need. It, you know, if you're exposed to radiation, you might, you know, you're going to get some cancer. You know, if you're exposed to asbestos, you know, mm -hmm. you're going you're gonna to get cancer. Uh, if you're not taking care of yourself uh, because you're putting things in your body and you wind up getting diabetes or whatever, whatever the case may be, uh, that's a that's a something put into you that has an adverse effect on you. Absolutely. The uh, the violence, um, the some of the terrible uh, traffic incidents our people have to respond to, like recently the d the dust storm that was on Interstate 55 where uh, there was a large number of fatalities and there was some very intense fires associated with that. It, and it, was. Was, it was a very I was unusual and intense I was to be on phenomenon. the highway that day. Yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah. a, a rare event, but mm -hmm. a destructive event. We had a, um, a, a hazmat situation with anhydrous ammonia uh, where people, there was anhydrous ammonia mm -hmm. and, and people were killed by the anhydrous ammonia. And seeing uh, the devastating effect that has on, on your, your fellow people. human beings, the violence that our people are investigating every day, res responding to homicides uh, uh, and, and seeing how um, human beings treat other human beings mm -hmm. in such violent, horrific ways, uh, children yeah, being treated horrifically. Those are things that yeah. are going into your soul, into your heart, your mind and your soul, and they are having effects uh, on your mental health. And it is... Uh, it is naive and, and, and really uh, ignorant to think that those Absolutely. things are not going to leave scars just the way physical things uh, can leave scars on you. So we have to embrace that. We have to acknowledge that. Uh, we have to be constantly asking ourselves, is this the best way uh, that we can provide uh, support services and, and wellness? I think the most, really the most important thing is, is um, just talking about it and making sure there's not stigma with it. Um, but one of the, you know, one thing that I, I think that, is sometimes missing from the equation when it comes to the wellness conversation is that uh, people um, can be very well and be very healthy and uh, be very happy even having gone through those horrible, terrible things mm -hmm. if they know that they're doing it for a higher purpose. Mm -hmm. Uh, people struggle with wellness and mental health if if, if it's meaningless and it's sure. just it, it just has no uh, uh, point to it um, the 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 challenges that you're enduring. But I, why I, you know, the why 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 am mm -hmm. I doing this? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it can become very nihilistic, and you you start to question everything, and then people really spiral. They break yeah. down. The and, cynicism gets the best. Exactly. Of exactly. Absolutely. And. Uh, sometimes we we make the mistake of wellness uh, being sort of a softness and touchy feely, and oh, I'll just take it easy, or or we let people kind of slack off a little bit or get a little sloppy, and well, they're having a hard time. That's really not what wellness is. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have integrity and have high standards, and that you can kind of you know get away with things that you otherwise wouldn't because you're having a hard time because of your wellness. You still have to have those high standards, and I think it's 
it's not just anecdotally, but I think the research shows if people believe in what they're doing. Absolutely. And they know that it's making a difference and they know that it matters. They'll go through hell and back and be, again, very happy, very well, and very Don't healthy. We uh -huh. Exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, they, they, you can be uh, a very um, in a good place mentally if you know that you've gone through those hard things for a purpose. And that's what we have to constantly remind um, the men and women who served in the Illinois State Police, as well as all law enforcement. This matters. This, this is important. It um, it, it's hard some days, and sometimes, uh, no matter what you do, uh, people are going to criticize you one way or the other. No matter what. It, no matter what. The people that, that you know, they, they uh, get angry with law enforcement. They say terrible things about law enforcement. But as soon as there's a danger or assume, that's, you know, assume there's some Absolutely. need for an investigation of justice, they, they then love the police. Mm -hmm. The people that say they love the police and they may wear little pins or, or whatever uh, mm -hmm. on, on their lapel saying how much they love the police or stick a sign in their yard. As soon as you arrest their cousin, as soon as you arrest their kid or you arrest them, they're going to say nasty things and Absolutely. say you're just a bunch of corrupt cops or whatever. So you've got to be very um, stoic about it and not not uh, um, harsh or cold or indifferent. But you know you got to you got to keep your eye on what is most important and you got to sort of brush those things keep off. The main thing, the main the thing, the main thing, Absolutely. and that is the focus on the oath uh, that uh, our officers take and focusing on that particular mission uh, because. None of this works, you know. There's no, there's no politics. There's mm -hmm. no economy. Uh, there's no um, uh, success in life. There's no, uh, you know, nice, comfortable houses and good meals and all the things we mm -hmm. enjoy in life. Uh, there's no civilization uh, without um, the law. Mm -hmm. uh, freedom is important. Uh, freedom is, is, is the way to go. It mm -hmm. seems to be the best system of government, you know, in, in history. It's not perfect, but it's, it's the way to go. But there's no freedom without the law. And then the, there's no law without law enforcement. And there's no law enforcement without the men and women uh, who are willing to serve in those positions and take on this job. So it it absolutely matters. And we have to remind them that, of that constantly when they're going through those really tough days when they've just dealt with a family member who they've had to uh, hold up on the front porch mm -hmm. of their house at, at East St. Louis because their son is lying on the street there, mm -hmm. uh, bleeding out and, and dead. Um, when they are dealing with a sexual assault victim uh, who, uh, who's just experienced the worst moment in their life, when they're dealing with a, a family member uh, who's the only one that survived in a car crash mm -hmm. and, and, and talking to them and, and interviewing uh, them, when they're dealing with the loss of their fellow trooper. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've unfortunately, we've had a lot of good records we broke since I've been the director, a lot yeah. of great uh, positive developments, but uh, unfortunately I've had to put more names on that memorial wall than any other previous director. Mm, I'm sorry. And, well, it's, it's the burden of command. It comes with the job. And the men and women who take this oath, they know that that's a possibility and they're, and they're willing to do it. Um, but they, uh, they keep their chin up, they keep leaning forward, they keep doing the job, uh, even during those very difficult moments, mm -hmm. um, because it matters. And they got to be reminded of that. And we have to not lo lose sight of that. And, if, you know, again, I've been director five years, you know, and I serve with the pleasure of the governor and the people of the state of Illinois. But if, if there's anything... Uh, I've done, at least I hope we can remind them of that, the, the sacred uh, importance of the job that they do. It is. It's, it's very important. And like I said, I know um, that you oftentimes, and just in law enforcement period, like I said, from my father-in-law to my cousin, to all the people that I care about that are in a similar capacity or in the same capacity. Because like I said, from Master Sergeant Riley sure. to Master Sergeant Dye, um, just people that I know and care about, um, just in times that I speak at churches or at schools, it's very important for the community of people to support law enforcement, Illinois State Police, because I would often tell, especially teenagers when I would go and speak, and I'm like, well, I know you hear whatever you hear from your family members or friends or sure. television or social media, but have you ever seen The Purge? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, Miss Kyle. I've said, do you want life to be the purge? You <laughs> yeah. know? And then they're like, right. it, the light bulb goes off. Like literally, because I'm like, so if you don't want the purge, yeah. then we 
welcome law enforcement. We welcome the prosecutor. We welcome the judge. Like we welcome the the system. Imperfect. We're all working together on a daily basis to assist in making it a more equitable, more just system. But if you don't want to live the purge, (laughs) okay? So I think for a lot of people, especially our viewing audience and our listening audience, that kind of brings it down because we're civilians. Again, I, I don't, I have a FOIA card. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't carry, you know, I don't, you know, and when there's an issue, I know who I'm going to call, you right. know, and again, there are people very close to my heart that wear a badge and carry a gun and protect and serve on a daily basis. And thankfully through the decades, they've made it home always successfully to us. But again, you said that's something that you all wake up every day knowing, but you do it anyway because of us. Absolutely. Well, it, and we it, thank you for that. Well, you know, and on behalf of the Illinois State Police, I thank you for that uh, uh, sentiment, for an understanding that and, and for acknowledging that. And it is easy to lose sight of that. It's easy to give in to all the cynicism um, where mm-hmm. we live in a very cynical you know, world at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, so much of our conversation is driven by. Uh, the negative, but there it can, you can wake up every morning or you can, you know, mm-hmm. be doom scrolling on your phone all night um, and, and think there's nothing good in the world, uh, but there's a lot of good in the world. Uh, and there's a lot of good in the world that is worth fighting for. And I believe there's a lot of good within the Illinois state police um, that is making a, a difference, you know, within the area that, that we're responsible for within the things that we're responsible for. And it's exciting to see him, see him do it. Um, and again, you have to have that long term perspective and know that the various controversies of the day are going to come and go. My my uh, my grandfather, he was NYPD. He was a homicide detective in New York. Uh, I have a great, great uncle who was a sheriff in Connecticut. And uh, what law enforcement does um, in some ways has remained the same, but it's evolved tremendously. Tremendously. Um, and, and, in, and in very positive ways. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if they were still walking this earth and you could talk to them, they would, they would tell you, you know, how much uh, things have improved and strengthened and uh, how people uh, really have uh, expected the best of law enforcement, mm-hmm. but law enforcement is is rising to that, and it, it's uh, appreciated that you know um, the message of respect for law enforcement, but it does go both ways, and uh, the people should demand uh, the best of us um, because that's what uh, the the contract is. You know, mm-hmm. that's the the covenant between the public and the police that um, we should uh, demand the best of each other. Absolutely. When, it, when, it, when, when we're interacting with each other and just in how we're making our decisions on a daily basis. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was wonderful. Um, I thank you for taking the time. Anytime, old friend. I know. I know, right? 10, how long? What, 10, 12 years? How long? 12, like 12 Oof. or 13 years at this point. Yes. Did you walk into state's attorney's office that was 10 <laughs> looking for a job yes that was 10 and then it was the left 2011 when i became the clerk and yes, then, yeah right. from now and it's been a great two years with the state so yeah. now we here are both in state government and there's a lot of good things going on at the state it is it's it's the illinois uh, you know we we're hypercritical of ourselves in illinois we get get down on ourselves about oh illinois government well you know, uh, the budget's been balanced. Mm-hmm. I think a great thing for the Illinois State Police in the past few years is just consistency. Yes, We've had uh, a reliable um, budget um, from the governor and from the legislature that has allowed us to make plans, to make mm-hmm. improvements, uh, to think longer term and in a more effective way for the public. And I think you're, you know, you're seeing, seeing those results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Will you come back? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, happy to, happy to talk more. We we didn't cover the half of what right. AISP is doing. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you for tuning in today to Pearls and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. I hope you enjoyed today's very informative and very personable episode, and we will see you again next week. But in the meantime, please like, love, share, and subscribe. See you later.